Hello and welcome to the final episode of Pride of Anglia. Is that because we're going to complete the challenge today? Of course not. We're not in the Champions League anyway, so we literally can't. But even still, like every save I do, we've gone on for so long in a rambling way, the next FM will be out soon. So in order to provide some semblance of professionality and closure, we'll wrap it up here. Will it be a good ending, a bad ending or just an ending? Let's find out. With Norwich, we've enjoyed our best start to a Premier League season so far, sitting fourth at the halfway stage and breezing into the Europa League knockouts. Will this be maintained or will we inevitably crash and burn? Now you might be thinking, this is the final episode, let's spend all the money we have on a top signing to propel us to some final glory. Well, the board don't agree as we only have 3 million to spend, so we'll just have to make do with what we've got. Benjalil starts us off in textbook fashion though with Young Player of the Month. And we begin with Burnley. Should be a decent start, right? And, well, yeah. Giannusa has his best Norwich game yet, setting up Hansen's tight angled effort to start things off, before a delightful ball forwards for McCrory to do his thing. And then in the second half, Clement caps off an excellent performance with a third. Not a bad start, really. After failing to beat Middlesbrough first time in the FA Cup third round, we face league leaders Spurs, and, well, we're not winning the league. The XG is pretty crazy, really, but basically, Basically, they are just way more clinical than us. But that's something we do then emulate as we crush Borough in the replay, and then we proceed to eventually beat Leeds in a crazy game at Elland Road, 6-3, exciting but not exactly defensively great. We end the month against Manchester City, having fallen to 7th largely as we are 2-3 games behind some teams, and we get a 1-1 draw which overall is probably a fair result. It's another young player of the month at least, this time for Jesper Hansen, before a disappointing defeat to Manchester United. We do, however, beat Notts County to make the FA Cup fifth round. Any chance of a final trophy? Leicester are next, and I take the liberty of recording it, and, well, unusually, this doesn't backfire at all, as we run absolute riot. Jorgensen fires in from a neat early move to set us on our way, before McCrory scores a goal he's scored dozens of times for us. He's at it again after the half-hour mark, and Hansen finds the top corner to make it four before the break and then uses his head for five not long after. McCrory wraps it up with what is, I want to say, his fourth hat-trick for us. 6-0, an absolute masterclass. Whatever else happens this season, we have made this team pretty consistently good at least. Can the run continue against Chelsea? Obviously, we basically always beat them and this time we crush them. 11 goals in two games. Not bad and a brace of McCrory here as well, as well as Like, who has broken in as first choice on the left now after really developing well. We're up to fourth place again, albeit 20 points off a rampant Spurs. We make it four wins out of four as we brush aside Newcastle 3-0 and the Europa League second round draw is finally made and we get Rangers, which is not too bad. We end the month against Arsenal, who are just a place above us in third. A win here would set up a potential barnstorming end to the season, but while we do take an early lead, we can't see it through and we are swiftly behind, eventually losing 3-1. Ah oh well. Can we end the series with a full house of Young Player of the Months? Hansen wins it again. De Conning also wins a rare goal of the month. Our FA Cup round then continues as we ease past Fulham 3-0 with a new gate receipts record as well. We have Liverpool next, the last of the big six we have to face in the league this season and it's another easy 3-0. If we could just play at home all year, that would be great. We're still in fourth, though we are some way off the sides above. Rangers are next. We come forwards early on and Calderon flicks it to Hansen to slot home an opener and then in the second half we win a penalty which Jorgensen smacks against the woodwork but Hansen is on hand again. We could get more but a 2-0 away first leg is a great start. And then we just go and lose to relegation threatened Reading because football manager. And look, another terrible youth intake. Not that it really matters now. In the second leg against Rangers, I figure we'll cruise it, so don't record. And, uh, well, we do make it through fairly comfortably in the end, but Rangers didn't go out without a fight. 5-2 overall. We get Valencia next. The final game before the international break is our FA Cup quarter final, which is against league leaders Spurs. So probably the end of the road. Uh, nope. A wonderfully disciplined performance. 2-0, Liverpool away in the semis. And when those internationals happen, there's a very proud moment as Benjalil wins his first cap for France. He only costs 4 million quid, possible signing of the save really. 
No young player of the month, clean sweep though. And then we lose to Brighton. Well, who cares about the league anyway? We aren't winning it, but we might win a cup. Valencia are next in the Europa League quarterfinals, and we dominate from kickoff and never look back. We get the breakthrough nine minutes in as Hansen fights an unmarked Calderon. The Mexican then turns provider for Papetti to head home, and then a lovely move sees him set up Giannusa for three before Benjamin gets in on the act. 4 0, pretty confident of progression, really. We go and beat Bournemouth in between 4 1, and the second leg in Spain is indeed a 0 0 formality as we make the semi finals of Europe's secondary competition and it's Atalanta we will face there. And speaking of semi-finals, why it's time for our FA Cup one. Our record against Liverpool is really quite good, so who knows? It's a tense first half with few chances, but in the second we strike early as Calderon cracks the bar and McCrory is there to do his thing. 1-0. Liverpool don't ever really look like doing anything much, and then after the hour mark, Like gets the ball on the left and unleashes a wonder strike worthy of winning any game. Liverpool have a late offside goal, but otherwise we dominate and we have another shot at silverware. Unfortunately, it's Arsenal in the final and we're rubbish against them. But never mind that because we have old enemies West Brom and we're in such good form we beat them 3-0 at the Hawthorns. Hanson and McCrory again with goals and then we go and back that up with an inexplicable loss at home to Brentford. We can still get fourth but uh, we probably should have won that. Not ideal preparation for the Europa League semi-final but there we are. We travel to Italy hopeful of a decent result and it certainly starts that way with Hansen finding Calderon to fire us in front. Papetti heads home a second as we look to take control but we swiftly allow them to grab a goal back. In the second half Like restores our two goal cushion as we look on for another excellent win but then with seconds left we stupidly give away a penalty which they obviously score. 3-2 is still a fairly decent away leg result I suppose. We do get one more young player of the month, Hansen, once again, and then we grab a late, late win over Wolves. This puts us back in our customary sixth place, three points off last year's tally. We then come to the second leg against Atalanta, far more poised than I would like given their late goal last time. Jorgensen is injured, which won't help, and then Hansen gets injured 20 minutes in, which certainly won't, and then Atalanta score to level the tie, which really, really won't help. Papetti nods us back in front, which is great, but then 10 minutes later we just let them score again. The rest of the 90 proceeds in kitchen sink fashion, but we somehow can't score again, and then in extra time Stockforce Smith contrives to miss this. He goes to penalties, the first few are scored, but then Stockforce Smith again fails when called upon, they can't miss, and it comes to Inchwasti, whose effort is appalling. We lose, we are out. I hate this game. Hansen is out for the rest of the season as well. We just about cling on to a win over Stoke before more assuredly beating Everton. This moves us to fifth with one game left and gives us a new record points tally of 71. We can still get fourth if things go our way on the final day as we face Aston Villa and maybe they will as McCrory's excellent take, turn and finish give us the lead or not as Chelsea are already 3-0 up. But fifth is still great right? Stop for Smith continues to ruin everything though and gives away a late penalty which Hansen saves but still from the same highlight he gives the ball away again and they just equalize anyway. Oh and then they score again and we lose and they go above us and we end up finishing in seventh. So a new record points tally but a lower position than the last two seasons. Great. This is why this is the last season. But don't worry because we can still end on a high. It's the FA Cup final against a team I don't think we've ever beaten. Here's the team. And I'll tell you what, it's a fitting game to end the series. And by that I mean it's absolutely awful. We do nothing whatsoever in the first half except allowing Arsenal in to score. Brenner, as ever. We do eventually have a highlight over 70 minutes in as De Conning scores an excellent solo effort. But then to epitomise everything, he then plays a more ironic pass which sees Arsenal muscle through to retake the lead. We do nothing in reply afterwards and so, as is the nature of football, they win. Should have just ended with a conference league win last season really, at least we will always have that. Oh and look, we've qualified for it again. So look, it's not a dream ending, but it is what it is. We've had fun right? Right? It turns out the real Premier League, FA Cup and Champions League win with an East Anglian side 
was the friends we made along the way. Here is the last team of the year. Really great overall, just not when it really counted. Papetti, Benjalul and McCrory are amongst the honour recipients and rightly so, they've been our three best players. Here, incidentally, is the overall best Norwich 11. Max Aaron's the only player we didn't use in any way, and plenty of our signings. It's definitely been a successful time here. Were it not for FM23 being out soon, I would probably keep going, but to be honest, I'm tired of this game. Northampton, by the way, are still a comfortable championship team, which is great to see. Some familiar names in their best 11. Braintree are back where they started. Some familiar names there too. So I promised an ending, and this is it. Not perfect, but then again, what is? I've had worse records and worse saves. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye, and I'll see you in some form for FM23.